Law Warrior Vehicles Prairie Schooner Land Train On many worlds, without established rail or air networks, ground transportation of goods is the only practical option. While city and roadbound vehicles often favour compactness, those designs for long-haul journeys, often thousands of kilometres, find that maximising the load carried by a single vehicle is the easiest option. The concept of land trains is not a new one, the first small-scale examples date back a thousand years or more, but in the last two decades, new generations of such vehicles have come to market, driven by the scientific discoveries from the Helm Memory Corps and the like. The Prairie Schooner is one such land train. Designed by Johnston Industries of New Certus and employing manufacturing techniques rediscovered by the NAIS, it's a standout feature of the 90-ton tractor module is its massive fusion plant that not only provides power for the tractor, but also the numerous 30-ton trailer modules. The Prairie Schooner doesn't always operate with such secondary elements. It has a credible cargo hold in the main body alone, but the ability to add up to three trailers greatly enhances the amount and type of cargo that can be carried. By default, each of the modules is a warm hold for general goods, but refrigerated, liquid storage, animal and even passenger variants are available. Unlike similar designs such as the larger Hector, the schooner's fusion plant gives it an effectively unlimited range, albeit at a significant cost premium. The heavy suspension and chunky tyres allow the vehicle to travel over most terrains with ease, particularly important on worlds without an established road network. Onboard quarters in the tractor allow the transportation of a second crew, allowing the vehicle to travel with minimal disruption. Those schooners that will be towing passenger modules often add a kitchen to the tractor module and carry the additional cooks and wait staff needed to operate it. Most prairie schooners are unarmed, but on worlds with significant predators, including those of a human variety, examples may feature weapon blisters operated remotely from the cockpit and which contain SMGs and other light weapons. Even where such modifications haven't been installed, the land train is well protected against damage, whether it be from bumps and scrapes or some form of attack, with several tons of light armour composite. As part of its off-road configuration, the schooner features proprietary self-writing technology that allows the vehicle to regain its wheels in all but the most damaging of incidents. The price tag of a complete land train, roughly half a million sea bills, puts the Prairie Schooner outside the price bracket of many haulage operators who instead opt for petrochemical powered designs. Nonetheless, the Prairie Schooner has established itself as the workhorse of many worlds in the Capella March, providing a never-ending link between widely scattered communities. Yeah, I bet you didn't expect a just a bus, eh? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, don't worry, there's a technical readout for just civvy vehicles. Um, it's just technical readout vehicle annex if you want to pick it up yourself. It's uh, really interesting. It's literally no no combat vehicles in, in the whole thing. It's all the kind of materials that you may use as a GM for the player's campaign, say on a backwater world where the players have to maybe travel from one location to the next uh, because not everybody's playing the game where they've all got battle mechs, for instance, and part of the game takes place on a land train, <laughs> traveling between locations, and shit happens, you know? It's loads of different ideas. Uh, but as it says, the vehicle is 90 tons. Uh, it moves at 4 and uh, flanks at 6. Has 184 points of armor, which is pretty decent at uh, armor factor. And it roughly, roughly evens out about 6.5 ton of armor. Uh, it's got 30 armor on each side, 30 on the rear, and 34 on the front, basically. So it takes a lot of hits before you can actually pen the internals. Uh, carries about 17 ton of cargo, has a standard of three crew, and uh, there's also the module itself, because that, that was just the stats for the actual vehicle, but the modules, which weigh 30 ton each, as it says, uh, have a armor factor of 62 each, 22 on the front, 15 on each side, and 10 on the rear. It's pretty decent. And it can carry 22 and a half tons of cargo. Uh, it features tractor, trailer, and off-road chassis, and control modification. There you go. But yeah, it's it's pretty different. I'm sure some of the games have used this kind of design in the past as just kind of um, prop window dressing around the maps. And it's nice when you can go, oh, I know what that is. <laughs> you know, you can see it. And uh, yeah, it's, it's really nice. It's one of the things that I, again, that I really, really like about the Battletech universe is the fact that there are, you know, books just dedicated to just civilian life, the stuff that 
everyday people would be dealing with. You know, not everything is battle mechs and aerospace fighters and power armor and tanks and stuff. And it's not always war. Obviously, there are huge sections of the Inner Sphere that very rarely see conflict. Uh, and these are the kind of things that you would see just driving around or, you know, that people are using in their everyday life so this book is really interesting i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do everything as just like one series uh just constant but i'll, I'll sprinkle a few of these in every now and then just to give people a, a di slightly different view of uh, life in the bt universe but uh until then thanks for listening everybody hope you have a good one and i'll catch you next time bye 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 bye